Well, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Out on the Ranch with Dr. Lee. First off, I'd really like to say thank you for all the kind comments you guys left about the cancer video that aired a couple of weeks ago on my channel. I, when I put it up, I did not know how well it'd be received. It was a difficult one for me to make because it involved not only a bunch of little animals that were my good friends that had cancer, their owners were also good friends of mine. And also, as you saw too, uh, one of the patients was my own uh, and we're going to lose her too so it was it was a very personal video as well but my goodness the comments that came after that uh, very heartwarming and very interesting too that uh, that particular video generated a lot of interest to the extent that I thought I needed to follow up on it there are things that you can do at home that will help you decide if your dog has cancer if he has conditions that may lead him to have cancer and everything from just a general physical exam to watching the color of his urine is it got a little bit of blood in it is it brighter yellow than it should be uh, the color of the stools the consistency of the fecal material the color of their gums the color of the whites of their eyes if you ever see those things turning yellow those are indicators. I decided to make a series of videos to show you things on your dog that you ordinarily would overlook. The most important thing is rub that dog down every day. Every time you're loving and petting on him, give him a good rub all over. So I'm going to do a video on a dog, on a general physical exam on a dog, things that you can do that, that may help you find precancerous conditions. I'm also going to do one on a cat. We're going to do blood work on, on a dog and cat. And that's what this is. I've already done it and uh, just haven't gotten to making the video yet. But um, not only am I going to do the blood work just to see if these animals have precancerous conditions on the inside, but I'm also going to show you if, if your vet hands you a page full of medical jargon and gobbledygook and you say my goodness what in the heck is a BUN creatinine ratio I'm, I'm gonna go through that with you so you'll be able to understand it and um, I, they and in vet school they had to dumb it down so even I could understand it so I can dumb it down even further too but um, nevertheless like I said I'm gonna make a series of videos here one on dog one on cat one on blood work and um, I hope you like it so here goes, here goes number one. I think you're gonna enjoy the, uh, the victim, I guess we should say the patient, but uh, anyway, I think you'll recognize him. So thanks a lot. I hope you enjoy these videos, and more importantly, I hope they save some lives. If you have any questions or comments about cancers in your dog, about pre-existing conditions, anything like that, put them down in the comment section. I'll do my best to get you an answer. Thanks a lot. Hope you enjoy this. Going? Yep. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. This is Dozer. He's a, a YouTube star off Off the Ranch. You've seen him on Off the Ranch a lot. And Dozer has volunteered to come in to be our guinea pig today. Um, we're going to show you areas on your dogs that you need to be looking for uh, obvious cancers and things like that. And uh, Dozer's a real good uh, little patient for doing this because he, he's a very calm little dog. But uh, he's a boxer. He is a high incident breed for cancer, so he's always a good one to check. Uh, we've cut tumors off of him already that were malignant tumors, and it's just one of those things we check them every day. Just when you're loving and petting on your pet, you should be just rubbing their entire body down, looking for lumps and bumps and things that, that appear abnormal. But uh, especially if you have a breed like a boxer or a golden retriever, they are very high incident breeds for cancers. But basically when we get, it, get these guys in to do their exams, uh, we have a systematic approach and it's not like you just think, well, I wonder what his heart sounds like, I wonder what his ears look like. We, we have a routine that we do. I always start at the tip of the nose and work my way back on them. And um, I check their internal organs first. So I usually come with a stethoscope first. I listen to their heart. And you're not going to be able to do that unless you have some training with it. But we'll show you ways that you can check to see if their hearts are beating normally. But I used to do that. And then I look inside their ears and go to their mouth. And then I start working my way all the way back. And I don't leave one inch of skin untouched on these dogs when they come in for exams. And you need to be doing that at home too. Um, 
And so we'll just start with his nose. You'll see a lot of uh, cancers that get in nose. You saw my cat last month, the pictures of hers with the, the nose. And basically what you ought to see is no color difference on either side. You don't want to see a little red area inside the nostrils. You want to make sure they're both good and have the same color all the way through. You don't want any lumps or bumps out here on the bridge of the nose either. And you can see Dozer's is nice and symmetrical. The color's the same. Same with the eyelids. You want them to be symmetrical. You want to roll those eyelids out like that so that you can see what's going on inside the eye. There's, it's real common for us to take lumps and bumps and tumors out of eyelids. We do that probably two or three times a week. We'll be cutting tumors out of eyelids. It's a very common area. Dozers look really nice. There's no lumps or bumps there. Also, looking for for uh, tumors that can be internally problems inside the dog, you always want to make sure that the pupil on this eye is the same size as the pupil on that eye. And when you hold your dog's head in an abnormal position, you don't see the eyeballs flipping. And what I mean by flipping is they'll literally flip side to side up and down or they'll rotate within their socket. Those are indications that there's problems going on either in the brain like a stroke or a tumor in the brain or balance mechanisms in deep inside the ears. And uh, coming back from his eyes, you want to check each ear, make sure it's nice and clean, that there's no discharges in there, that there's no lumps and bumps. And you want to compare one side to the other and make sure because there's a lots of natural pieces of cartilage in the ear that make funny little lumps and bumps like that one right there you want to make darn sure he's got one of those on the other side and he does so that's what you want to see if you ever see a lump on one side that he does not have on the other side then you need to get that checked and looking at their mouth this is not always a lot of fun and boxers have the most comical mouths anyway those are not too bad, but you can see his lower jaw sticks out a lot further than his upper jaw. And these teeth have been buried. His gums have grown over his teeth. That's just a common bulldog and boxer kind of thing that we see. But you want to check and make sure there's no big lumps or bumps or growths growing in his mouth. And see, he's not caring much for this, but I'm doing it anyway, and he's tolerating it. He is, he's really a good dog. But I don't see anything in there abnormal. And um, I'll show you uh, right after this uh, another video of a cancer inside a mouth of a little golden retriever. Uh, that I've showed it to you already, but it'll, it'll kind of drive home the point of what we're looking for. Can you see that side? Mm -hmm. okay, are you going? I'm recording, yeah. Okay. And this is the normal side over here on this little dog. Came in with just, with just stinky breath. And here's what's going on on the other side. Michelle, if you can, kind of get a side view of that. Let me get all this out of the way. Okay, you can see that this thing's about an inch and a half thick, all that swelling. That's all cancer. Swelling all on the inside, everything. More than likely bone cancer. But anyway, that's got the head part done. Now, looking for other tumors, and especially, like I said, golden retrievers are high instant breeds for uh, cancer. And um, in, in those dogs, one thing you want to look at is this area under here. And you want to come down and feel all through. There's lymph nodes and salivary glands all down in the throat, right behind the jaw. <laughs> Thank you, Dozer. I needed a kiss real bad. But there's a lot. Those are quit licking. There's a lot of lymph nodes down in this throat latch area. When dogs get malignant lymphoma, one of the first areas you'll see is in these lymph nodes down here. And what they feel like a cluster of grapes underneath the neck, right there in the throat. And they're real easy to feel. So you need to always know what normal feels like so that when you do have something abnormal, you'll be able to tell readily and get the dogs into the hospitals. But also with lymphoma, while we're on that subject, it's not just these lymph nodes right here. Dogs have the same lymph nodes as humans, same areas. They've, they've got them right here in front of the shoulder blades. They've got, on both sides, this, this is a bilateral symmetrical thing all the way back. 
where you have a lymph node on one side, you got it on the other too. They have them down here in the armpit, the axillary region. They've got them down here in the groin, right down in there. And they also have them right here behind the knee. The ones in the armpit and the ones in the groin and the ones in front of the scapulas, right in front of the shoulders, those are really, really hard to feel unless they're diseased. Now this one right back here in this loose tissue behind the knee, you can usually find it. It takes a little bit of practice so that you can locate it, but it's usually like in dosers, I can feel it. It's good to get your dog where the knee's flexed a little bit, where you can feel that lymph node right there. And it's about the size of a tiny gray or a green pea, and that's called the popliteal lymph node, but you need to feel these frequently so you know what they normally should feel like and so that if they start to enlarge, you will know that readily. Also, other areas where we see a lot of tumors, you see me in the last couple of videos cutting toes off dogs. Always make sure their toes are the same size, pretty close to the same size, all the way up, up, across there. And I'm gonna have the cleanest hands in the world after Dozer finishes my bath. But uh, come down here, Dozer. You're making it hard to fit the video, bud. But there's the webbing. You want to check the webbing on every toe, both the top side and the bottom side. See, I've got a finger underneath there, and you want to go through all of their toes and feel all the webbings through all their toes. We see a lot of cancers in their toes. Dozer's cancers that we've taken off of him have been all in the skin. And I thought I saw a scar. Yeah, here's a scar. Michelle, see if you can get this right here. There's a scar right there where, where Matt cut a cancer off of him. Looks like there may be a little bit of a lump. See that little bitty area right there? There's a, there's a little bitty nodule in there and I bet Matt's not noticed that. That is tiny. And the only reason I noticed it is because the way the light's shining down, it makes a shadow. There's a little nodule in there about the size of a green pea, maybe even smaller than that. So we'll tell Matt about that. But um, we found dozers just by checking him over every day and Matt's cut those off of him. And, uh, but always check all of their skin all over the entire body. And um, what I was saying a while ago about um, uh, as far as their hearts are concerned, what, what you want in a dog, and a dog his size probably has a heart rate around 100 right now, something like that. But you can put your fingers between their ribs and you can usually feel their heartbeat with your fingers. And granted, you can't feel murmurs or anything like that unless they're really terrible. But you can tell the heart rate and you can tell how strong the heart is. And if you know what's average, what's normal, what your dog usually feels like when you're feeling his heartbeat, you'll also be able to tell when it's abnormal. Also, another good place to feel, and this, let me get him to stand up, stand up, those. Stand up, stand up, that's a good boy. Their, their femoral dose is a little bit arthritic, so I'll let, I'll let him sit back down in just a minute. But their femoral artery comes right along the bone on the inside of the femur back here. This is the femur, and um, that, that bone right there where it comes down, you can stick your hands on the inside, coming from behind the dog, put your hands in there, and you can put your fingertips on that artery. And again, this is, these are things that take practice. You're not gonna feel it the first couple of days, but keep trying. And then one day you'll think, oh, there it is. And then you'll be able to tell. From that, you can tell how, how strong his pulse is. And you can also tell how regular it is. It ought to be a nice regular pulse. But other than that, um, let me see if I can get Dozer to stand up one more time. Come here, buddy. It's always a good thing to just run your hands through their guts. And I'm just squeezing side to side. If there's any lumps or bumps in there, you'll be able to feel them. And also, if the dog shows any pain while you're feeling through here, then you need to get that checked too. But uh, basically, it's oh, oh, one other thing too. Looking back here at their anus, and boy, Dozer's one of those dogs that has a tight tail clamp. You wanna look for lumps and bumps on their anus or any redness that protrudes from inside the rectum there. You need to be looking at that too. So that's pretty much it from, from nose to tail on one of America's favorite dogs right here. 
And um, if you have any questions or anything, put them in the comments below and I'll try to answer them. But anyway, watch for cancers in your dogs. Uh, like I said in, in the other video, one out of four dogs will die from cancer. Of those that live to be 10 years of age, 50% of those are going to die from cancer. Anyway, thanks a lot for dropping in. Dozer thanks you, and I do too. We'll see you next time on Out on the Ranch with Dr. Lee.